And welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeff Hellinger, joined by Dr. Andra Gillespie. Well, let's get right to it. 49% for Senator Warnock, 49% for Herschel Walker, and got to be over 50% plus one, right? This is not surprising. The exit poll suggested that uh, they were going to be in this position. Um, and as more votes come in, it looks like the exit polls were uh, somewhat accurate. We'll have to wait to see um, exactly how accurate they were. But as the numbers are coming in, nothing is a surprise so far. You, you know, the last time I talked to you about an hour ago, I, I brought up the subject of, of ticket splitting, where you vote for perhaps uh, Governor Kemp and then you vote for Senator Warnock. But it's not that. It's a case of not voting at all, right? That's part of what's going on. So we see fewer votes being cast um, in the Senate race than in the gubernatorial race. Right. But we also can't discount uh, that there may be some voters who are voting for Brian Kemp and also voting for Chase Oliver. So um, Warnock probably took a few of those votes. Uh, Oliver probably took a few of those votes. And not voting in the race also took a portion. So do we know where the votes are right now as far as the U.S. Senate goes? And, and I'm focusing more on that right now than Governor Kemp versus Stacey Abrams. Governor Kemp out in front front right now, mm -hmm. but I think the focus right now is is the Senate race, which is at 49% for each candidate at this point. Do we know where these numbers are coming from for the most part? Well, they're coming from all over the state, but they are incomplete. So there are a few counties that haven't reported numbers um, as yet, but uh, most counties have reported something. Um, and so there are a couple million votes that are cast. I think it's a question of whether or not we have four million votes cast or something a little bit more than that. That will give us a, a greater number. So we still have a ways to go in county. I have a few longtime friends who are passionate politicos, mm -hmm. and they have texted me that they thought this was an hour ago, that there was some troubling numbers for Herschel Walker. Do you still believe that to be the case, or is this dead heat really reflective of where the race is and where it will be going in the hours ahead? Well, your friends may be comparing Walker to Brian Kemp, and they're also probably comparing Herschel Walker to Donald Trump in 2020. And so what we're seeing is that in both instances, Walker is underperforming. That's why this race may go to a runoff. Mm -hmm. Given the fact that the other Republicans are ahead, one would have expected that their coattails or that Walker would have been part of that wave. Um, he's at the top of the ticket, actually, technically. Um, but that perhaps Brian Kemp would have had coattails to bring Herschel Walker along. But it's Walker's weaknesses as a candidate, being a novice, having personal baggage that has given some voters pause, and it's uh, caused them to make certain decisions about not participating in this race or perhaps voting for one of the other candidates. And my friends may be, you know, consuming cocktails, too, so we can't, we can't consider mm -hmm. that too much. But um, let's talk about what a runoff would look like between Warnock and, and Walker. How different would that be from what has transpired in the last X number of months. Well, uh, we should not expect for this runoff to look like, say, the 2008 runoff um, uh, uh, between Saxby Chambliss and, and, and Jim, Jim Martin. Martin. Yeah. Right, like, like we're, we're past that point in yeah. Georgia politics. Right. So uh, one, uh, you know, I expect that Democrats to, to, to hotly contest this. They're, they don't want to lose this seat. If, it, if Senate control comes down to this particular seat after the results of tonight, then all bets are off and everybody is going to be here in Georgia in the same way that they were in, you know, December in early January of 2020 and 2021. So this race is critically important, and Democrats have no desire to lose this seat, I would argue, under any circumstance. So Saxby Shambliss and Jim Martin were taking that back. Martin won in November yes. and then got crushed yep. by Shambliss in the runoff. Yes. Um, so uh, there was a you know, wave of Democratic voters that couldn't get Barack Obama over the line, but there were probably a lot of new Democratic voters who were there to help Martin um, in that particular race, and they did not come back after Thanksgiving Man, to those, vote in the runoff. Those runoffs in the state of Georgia, they're crazy. Yeah. I mean, they're just totally unpredictable. I mean, it really comes down to which side can maintain their mobilization base and get their people out to vote. Yeah. And yeah. Democrats have gotten better at being able to put a mobilization operation together than they were in 2008. All right, Dr. Gillespie, thank you very much. And right now we are heading to break, and we will have more for you coming up right after commercial.